that look at the uh, one, so I assume now F is a P and uh, everything is a multiplied. Just to, 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 to show that the P is all delta of one uh, in Guido, the place about V, of the whole, according to it and so on. So here I have no, no more choices. I am obliged to prove that. Otherwise, uh, it's impossible to, to do anything. So this is the reason why I'm not for that the fundamental lemma. It's because if you don't have it, you can forget about the method. But uh, it's not a lemma. <laughs> it's, a, it's a difficult theorem in general. Except that for, for GLN, and by change, the is simple. So here, the ring is another simple proof. In this case, you do okay. But we still, uh, to go from this particular function, mm -hmm. to go from this particular special function, to the general case of function from Geek algebra. Is it difficult? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, uh, yes and no? I mean, it's, it's less difficult to do this. It's for the JLN, not for general. Yeah, for JLN, uh, in the JLN the transfer can be controlled uh, directly, so you don't need to use the uh, use this ah, the argument. It can so be done directly. It. it can be done directly. For this situation. So and in fact it came as a surprise. Uh, the Western result came really as a surprise. Because people thought before that that one would be able to to establish a transfer and then to refine it, to have a refinement to get the fundamental lemma. Mm -hmm. Because the fundamental lemma is a particular case of the transfer. Yes, it's true. But it turned, it turned out that it was really a supply. That that's that's what I showed that we so can just deduce the, the, by a, a local, local, uh, global local principle of uh, analysis. You can deduce the local uh, the transfer for all places, yeah. for all finite places, from the transfer from the fundamental level. So you really need to extract this particular case for more general groups like unitarian groups? Or for in all cases, you need absolutely need that. Okay. Okay. So let me let me say one thing in general. So for base change here, I have uh, just a one uh, here, which is the uh, finance. I didn't like it. But in general, it's more complicated, slightly more complicated. There is in between. So for a general situation, just, I just want to say that in general, it's still not exactly a, a, a something like that. So when I say the O gamma of F is uh, that is a constant factor between the uh, of uh, gamma and delta and uh, all delta of Ft. So this is a, a funny factor, it's called the transfer factor, which happens to be one for which for Does it mean that the G will It does not disappear, it's one. In this sense. The transfer factor is a, just a root of unity up to, a, up, to a, up to an element of a, a real positive number which is easy to compute. But the, the difficult part is the root of unity. And uh, the modulus of uh, the like, like, hmm? like Gaussian. 
something like New York City. Yes. So usually it's, uh, yeah. So this is correct, the GNN disappears like it's one. It's one, yes. <laughs> for patient, for GNN, it's one. So uh, it's a very nice situation. But in general, the most factor is an object has a uh, not element curve. Uh, and very little to be good. But usually it reduces to size. Uh, most of, in most situations, there are just signs to move. But these signs uh, behave very, very nasty, in a very nasty way when you approach singularity. So this is a, an object which is highly uh, flickering when you approach singularity. And you have to move. Okay. Uh, so, so that's one difficulty. So uh, I can use a kind of this to text uh, 15 minutes, I don't think they have time. But this is really a nice proof. Uh, explicit 
they are defined by some inductive process. So what replaces the weighted orbital integral are invariant orbital are, uh, can be expressed in terms of ordinary orbital integral, but in a non-explicit way. But you have uh, uh, an induction procedure in order to construct that. But it's rather complicated. So that's the way uh, this is also. I have uh, tried to develop another approach, which is to, to, to ask that the transfer works also for weighting orbital integral. So, you use a stronger form, you write it down up to skip, after spectrum. So, as we use weighting transfer or uh, strong transfer. If you prefer, it's a stronger form. Okay. 
So you have on this particular side, you have G spec S, G, which is both spec and G spec S, G to go at five Assume you have that. Now, this can be written in a slightly different way, a more detailed way. You have G spec, I will write the discrete of F plus G, G continuous of F. And similarly, this is a G, G to discrete of F plus G, G to continuous of F plus. Okay, what is what is a discrete discrete path? So I have to say it in detail because it's important for applications. The G discrete of F uh, or of F similarly. This is always in, this can be defined a priori, this is always in line. In any case it's an invariant form. It's in line. And it contains, so the, the, the thing is, it contains the trace of the discrete part of the representation. But there are extra terms. Plus extra terms, extra discrete terms. That's the thing which looks funny. Because those discrete terms come from the continuous spectrum. And the space here is in A, M, and 
zéro pour J. Sur M, J contient M, c'est-à-dire la également. Sur ce space one dimensional, you have the, the, the imaginary axis and you look at the zero here. But so this is for the element, so the L will be G if S corresponds to the, to the element 0 minus 1, 1, 0. So this is the value, so you can get the first formula, already in the first formula. You have the 1 over 4 phase of uh, MS1, well, depends on MS0. And, uh, the pi, pi zero of s, where pi zero is the induced representation with zero parameter from the So, and, uh, okay. So this shows up already in cell there for some reason. So this is some kind of special information? No, 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 no. No, no, this is really a unitary principal series. So for SL2, it occurs for the for the principal series attached to ah, quadratic characters. So everything down here is a unitary representation. Is inside? Inside? You only unitary representation. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And uh, so, okay, you, you have this term, and uh, if you look in the so, set. Sorry, if this is a unitary principal representation, which is induced by non unitary character. Well, you always have to shift by the half mode, yes. right? but this, 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 shift, this shift is included in what I call parabolic induction. Parabolic induction uh, includes the shift by the half yes. mode. Yes. So, unitary characters correspond to unitary representation. Uh, induction. For me, it's a normalized unitary induction. Yes, always. That's for for spectral uh, symbols uh, the right right way. Of course, if you insist on rationality, this uh, square root uh, uh, may be a problem. But uh, for LAD things and so on, you may have problems, and you may prefer not to, to make that shift. But it's uh, the theory uh, for complex organization, you just take the square root of the uh, of the the modulus uh, for the parabola, and that you make that shift permanent. So the, otherwise, uh, things are very good. So, so you need to have this. this so this really occurs, and in particular, so so these things are, are hidden in the discrete part. They don't come from the discrete spectrum. I insist, they don't necessarily come from the discrete spectrum. The make up from the continuous spectrum. But there is a discrete contribution from the continuous spectrum. Because in fact, when you make the truncation, you, you, you have some kind of uh, very uh, uh, oscillating integral, and when you pass to the limit, when it is large, but you get the Dirac, the Dirac pressure. It's just a uh, sine lambda x over x, something like that. So it's, it's a kind of, uh, you really have that kind of, uh, of computation. So, uh, so okay, that's that's the fact. So now, what what happens? You get you have the, the equality here, so you you get the equality. Here. So the first step, the first step to read, the first refinement you can make is to show that. Uh, so now this, these objects are distribution, but you have a discrete support plus a continuous support. Like a, they can be seen as measures on some uh, on space of functions. Random measures. And now random measures can you can you can separate easily the continuous part of the discrete part. So if you do that by moving the function f, or rather the function f with the function, you move the function f with all you separate the discrete part from the continuous part. And the uh, first refinement is that you get the g, g discrete of f is equal to g to the discrete of f. So this is 
digital. Oh, sorry, you need some conditions on the functions, no? No, no. Precisely, you can improve your, uh, your, your identity has to be general enough so that you can move sufficiently to, to extract from this that the, the, the discrete part does not mix up, it's separated. You need enough function to separate the discrete from the continuous part of the measure. You have some measure. Well, sorry, because the spaces are orthogonal. No? And, and, and the orthogonal matter. You have a deposition of generally two in the No, no, it's not, it's not that. No? It's not that, because as I said, as I said, as I said You have a spectral decomposition L2 and this is print plus continuous. Now on this you have a R discrete and R continuous. What I said is that P discrete equals the place of R discrete plus something. And the plus something comes from the continuous. It's not the trace of a, a, it's a trace, it's a twisted trace, it's a trace twisted by a, by a linear cutting operator. Yeah. And you, you have special values where it's, it gives a district. So it's a, it's a bit sort of point. So it really contains a non zero term. And you will see they are exactly the ones that count for automorphic induction. Automorphic induction are just here for F -wheel. So, so the technical point of view is it, 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 mm -hmm. this. When you play with the two, it's a bit softer. It's not very direct, you see. Is it? No, is it? it's not the it's not it's the one. It's straightforward. No, no. What is No, nothing is straightforward in any case. No, no. But I, mean, I mean, even to, to, to see that this is a trace class. Yes. This is a recent theory. No, no. So it has, it has been used. Implicitly, without using with, with, with well, it morally it was uh, there, but it was not proved. But we deal with things as if it were true, yeah. without using it. But still, it's true. Mm -hmm. But what is true is that really there is something non trivial And that really comes from the, from the continuous spectrum through the truncation. Again, as, as I said, that when you truncate the expression you, you get in the, 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 the spectral side, on the continuous spectrum, you have, you have a parameter t, and uh, you look at the way the parameter t uh, acts, you, you let t tends to infinity. So you have uh, things like uh, sinus uh, t, x over x, and at the end you get some direct expression. Yeah, but excuse me, so I, I uh, believe that there is some approach when you impose some um, some conditions on this test function f, and then this extra term will disappear. Of course, there are particular cases. But it's not in the way. Yes, yes. there are. For example, uh, one way to kill this extra term is to assume that at one place uh, the function f is what I call a pseudo coefficient of the of the special representation, the Steinberg representation. Yeah. If you insist that the trace is only in the Steinberg and the trigger, or in the unitary spectrum, mm -hmm. then it kills this term. This term will be zero. So it will disappear. But uh, then you... But this is not the way it is. Not the way it is. It's, uh, the point is that it, this is a perfectly nice way to do things, but not everything. Because if you want to deal, to, to deal with the automorphic induction, then you cannot do that. Because you kill the, the, the thing which you, you are interested in. Oh. <laughs> so, so simple, simple form of the trace formula may work, but they, they kill some information. So, uh, precisely the point is that it's uh, okay. So now, well, so now you have a game which Thank you. 
around. And uh, well, when you when you write the, the detailed uh, uh, comparison, you will have representations that give a discrete contribution here that will leave that non-discrete. Discrete, but uh, coming from the continuous spectrum part. So, well, I'm uh, almost out of time. So, uh, if you if you want, for example, to see the proof of the fundamental lemma for uh, unit elements, uh, I confess I can give uh, the next lecture uh, next week. Okay. Maybe. So, if you want, so I can explain that. It's a, it's a, it's a nice exercise. So uh, it's not difficult, and uh, it, but very, very, uh, uh, I mean, very tricky because at the beginning, uh, long long that using, after, using, the building, using the building and so on. While uh, the quantum computation, while well, in this paper, it's right on the building, but you don't need to. You don't need to do it. It's a really a somewhat elementary exercise, but but very, very tricky. It's quite uh, very good. <laughs> You said simple, bro. Yes, it's a simple simple. It's a fula. It's really a fula. It's really a fula. Complete proof of in a fula. So it's really absolutely uh, striking. If you compare with our general Langlois proof, it's really for GL2, while this works for GLM, this is much, much simpler. So we will discuss. Okay. So, well, I, I, I cannot say uh, much more uh, in the time. Uh, so again, the, the key the key observation is that you can get such an identity for open F F by playing again with the F you can separate the various contributions. So you get eventually that uh, if you have a fine window of the F, which is finite invariant, well this will be a sum of uh, Pi i of f, and you show that the pi i are all of the form pi tensor, some epsilon to the r, where epsilon is the character attached to e over f. And in fact, uh, it turns out uh, they have all the same, so with uh, one over l somewhere. And uh, you have L such representation. So this is in general uh, uh, the generic situation. Generic case, you have that. So in fact, you will get that. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, we could just take maybe a few bit right. Yes, yeah. thank you. So I will. Tell you what is uh, the generic case. Generic case means that pi, the pi i are all different. If the, if the two guys are different, one is one term for a i. Oh, sorry. What is the difference of this degree a? Well, I mean, it's so you it's it depends on. You have to compare the measure. You, you have. Uh, Measure on one side and on the other side. Mm -hmm. You have to, to take some comparison compatible with the transfer of orbital integrals. And the, 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 the point is that you have the HE, the, the center, you have some, you have intensity, some presence of measure on HE. You have a measure on A, 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 then, because of that small center which uh, which shows it. So for example, okay. So uh, you have this, and this in the general case, so I mean this is true, then you get S of pi of F is maybe pi middle of S of pi middle of F middle. Uh, which means that locally everywhere you have an identity of characters and the twisted character between the character and the twisted character. Between the uh, uh, and the Yeah, which means which means what? The 
effectivement, on aurait certaines functions qui vont être mal pour le caractère, which is the distribution of x uh, <coughs> times f of x, but it's, uh, it's more uh, from g, but it's better to write it as a distribution uh, on the orbital integral, so it's also all x of x on a different space, I don't want to write space of, uh, of orbit. So, with some measure. But it's a distribution, so we don't do the, this is a distribution. And uh, now, since, uh, since you have this equality, this means that theta, theta pi widow of x or of delta z is the same as theta smaller pi of norm of delta. So you can use an identity for between the twisted character, delta belongs to change below. This is a local step. And, uh, and uh, the character, you, you, have the, the, you, you have the transfer of orbital integrals, so you can use the transfer of characters. So you get this, and of course you can check that this gives you what you expect for an ramified basis. At an ramified basis, this defines you. So the standard base shape, the, the obvious notion of base shape. So this is for an ramified basis? For all basis. For all basis. This is for all basis, and it tells you that at all basis you have a, you have a correspondence between the uh, given by the you have a by, and given by you have a by and so on. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What if you put the B representation and we all do this in part? It is has this normalization structure, I think, R divided by A. But when you compare traces of the irreducible components which you would like to make this base change, in this equality you have no reason. No, no, but this scale is constantly out by the fact that you have a repetition of L terms. Ah, because it will be repeated. It's, 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 yeah, the, the, the trace of pi tensor epsilon of F is equal to the trace of pi of F because F is a transfer. So it's not all function, it's only those that are transferred. So it doesn't see the twist. So you can remove all these guys, it's just one. Well, here, this is 
totally not true. You see, this cannot be this way. So what you get is one of the phase of I of F. But what will be on the other side? It has to be one of the phase of I to know or something. So where does it come? You remember when I had the trace, I had some scalar trace of M of U, I feel, from F2. Here I had the one of the determinant of S minus M, M T not A, uh, and L bar of M on A and G, uh, A and G. So on A, no, for F, A and F. It was AMG mod AMG. So it's AMG. So the here, the S again corresponds to 0 minus 1 minus 0. So the determinant of uh, minus 1 minus 1 is 2. So, so in this case, the, this determinant is 1 over 2. So, tells you that the, the guy that are invariant by fixing by the character epsilon, they, often, they can be lifted, but they lift to something which is no more discrete, which becomes Eisenstein. It becomes, it becomes a member of the continuous spectrum, but it is the part which gives the discrete contribution because you twist it by some stop running your price. And that's so now you can forget about these two things, so you get an identity of characters, but it's a, it's a different kind of, uh, of identity. And this is the one attached to uh, automorphic induction. So automorphic induction corresponds precisely to those to those non-generic cases which will be decomposed after the shift. Yes, they become decomposed because uh, inside decomposed in some sense. This is an induced representation. This is an induced representation. The right below is induced from uh, so for for G and two. For G for G and two. So the uh, pi and tensor epsilon then the pi trivial uh, corresponds to so, the pi corresponds by uh, the reciprocity corresponds to an induced representation from the value of the value of the of theta and uh, by the uh, By restricting now, this is going to sigma. When you restrict sigma to p, it becomes theta plus theta conjugate. The theta has, not, not, it has nothing to do with it's just a character, so I should not maybe write theta, I don't know. So on the spectral side, it becomes a uh, decomposed representation. It's a direct sum. But the reciprocity map transforms direct sum into a parabolically induced representation. Because it gives you a representation of a Levy subgroup and uh, the, the parametrization uh, is uh, transformed. The injection of the Bissell group in a group into parabolic induction on the, on the representation theorems. So this explains, of course, uh, on the, you have the same thing, the, 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 the sigma and the epsilon, but it's, it's, it has not the same meaning. Here I twist by the character of the determinant. Uh, sorry, here I twist by the character of the determinant. Here I compose with something in the center. But it's again uh, isomorphic to sigma. 
and to explain that it is induced. This is the imprimitivity theorem. So it tells you that it is induced. So, so again, and that's why I insisted on the fact that the G discrete is not the rest of the discrete part. So precisely the holomorphically induced, uh, automorphically induced representation correspond to that part of discrete, at least in the simplest case, when I write for the discrete part going to the continuous spectrum of the discrete, discrete, discrete contribution from the continuous spectrum. Okay, I stop here. Okay. So today is the last uh, arranged lecture. Thank you very much.